the one that says gravitational force. So I'll give you a second to do that. Uh, keep in mind, you should have taken learning target three notes. So the universal gravitation notes, done that some of that practice so that you know how to multiply exponents by now and all that good stuff. All right, so Mrs. Klein's just gonna have to pause me if you're not ready. But uh, here we go, first page together. Remember, you've gotta get your name checked off before you're able to take LT3. Okay, and LT3 will still be live this first week. Remember, updating grades this weekend. So, uh, prior knowledge, on the night of a full moon, Mary decides to do an experiment with gravity. At midnight, she climbs into her backyard tree house, leans out the window, and holds an acorn as high as she can. She lets go and is disappointed to see the acorn plummet back down to earth. If Mary expected anything else, I worry about Mary. But, regardless, number one, why did the acorn fall to earth instead of rising up to the moon? Well, I think you might have an idea, but take your best guess on that. And if you need to pause me, talk to Mrs. Klein, talk to your neighbor, whatever. But think about why. I mean, gravity's pulling from both objects. So why did it go down instead of up towards the moon? And number two, give two reasons why we feel Earth's gravity more strongly than the moon's gravity. So your justification in number one probably is partially the answer for number two. Okay, so you're looking for two reasons that Earth's gravity at least we feel Earth's gravity more than we feel the moon's gravity. Okay, here we go. So, so you know me, I don't read everything. So to begin, turn on the show force vector check boxes for A and B. I'm just gonna give you some helpful hints here for the entire gizmo of what to check and not to check and just leave it like this. So if you load the gizmo up, you launch the thing. I know it's weird looking. But just check these four boxes, leave it where the grid is showing, and leave it where show distance is, but don't do the show connecting line. It just makes it funny looking. All right, so again, check up here. If that says Coulomb force, this looks about the same, but you're going to be lost. Okay, so it's got to be the gravitational force one. All right, so move object A around. As A has moved, what do you notice about the force or the direction of the two force vectors? So the, we know an arrow is a vector. So as you move A around, which hopefully you are doing right now, those two arrows should still be pointing at each other. Okay, so they always point at each other. That is the opposite of what you saw with electricity. Let's say it was two positive charges with electricity, they would point away. How do the two lengths of the two vectors compare? That's a similarity to, a, to an electric force. The lengths are equal. Doesn't matter if you change the size of A or just change the size of B, the attraction between them is going to be the same. So lengths are equal. Number three, drag A closer to B. So even if you don't change the size, but you get them closer to each other, so hopefully you're grabbing A, bringing it towards B, maybe until the, even the arrow tips touch, and you notice as they get closer, so if we get closer, we see an increased length, which most importantly means an increase in the attraction. All right, so this starts out pretty easy, but this simulation is, a little bit harder than dragging the, the foo-foo dog around in that first one. All right, this one's a little bit more mathematical, but you've got a math genius leading you now, so you should be all set. Um, activity A says gravity and mass. So you already, if hopefully you just leave the check boxes, but um, check that each mass is set to 10. So remember, it's just like when we did the Coulomb Law one, you can change these masses in here. But at defaults, they should both be at 10 right now. And we're going to start out with our hypothesis that says, how do you think the masses of A and B will affect the strength of the gravitational field between them? All right, so how do you think the masses will affect the strength? So let's just start it where we say, if either 
mass increases, then the g-force will, and don't just leave that fill in the blank, you don't even have to write the blank, just tell me what you think it's going to do. So go up or go down, increase or decrease. Um, so number two wants you to be more specific. So if the two objects, if for each one the mass doubled, so let's say MA went up to 20 and MB went up to 20. Right now they're at 10. If each one of those doubled, by how much do you think the force would go up? Okay, so we're looking for something more specific than it goes up, it goes down. Is it going to double? Is it going to quadruple? Is it going to, I don't know, what is, what is eight tuple, octuple? I don't know, Google that. Okay, but what do you think is going to happen? Okay, next up, place object on the object A at negative 20 and B at positive 20. Okay, so you should have, leave them at 10. So we're going to be at negative 20 and positive 20. So I know that looks horrible. I'm sorry, but that's where they should be. And what is the magnitude of the force on object A? Remember down here, it's absolute values. Those two forces will always be the same. So you are just looking at where my fat finger is pointing right now. Okay, so 0 0.0417 newtons. 0.0417 newtons. All right. What I'll do is the first row with you guys. So this number just gets carried down below. Notice in this box, or sorry, in this table, we're going to be changing just the mass. Do not move the dots. I repeat, do not move those dots. All you are going to do is change the masses in the boxes. So we start out with the one that we just did. So we would have 0 0.0417. To figure out the force factor, we've done this in electricity. You divide whatever is in this column, okay, so any of these numbers, you divide by 0 0.0417 to fill in your force factor. So 0 0.0417 divided by 0 0.0417, that is one. Whatever answer you get here, divided by 0 0.0417 is your answer there. So everything here, to figure out what goes here, all you do is change mass B to 20. So I would take B, go 20, and you have to hit enter for it to register. Okay, sorry, making you sick probably. So I put a 20 in, and notice my new force is down below, 0 0.0834. So I'm going to have 0 0.08. 3, 4, divide it by this, get that answer. Oh, I had some highlighters. Yay, found the highlighters. All right, so for the column, I have highlighted. You've done this already. You are multiplying mass A times mass B. It is essential, it's, the, it's this part. You've already done that. It's no different than M1 or M2. Gizmo Company just decided to call mass A and mass B instead of M1, M2. Same thing. So it's 10 times 10 to the fifth multiplied by 10 times 10 to the fifth. Two ways. A lot of you know the rules for exponents. Go Miss Narker, Shimoniak, Demott, whoever I might be missing. All right, Mrs. Klein, throw you in there. But if you don't, remember it's 10. Ugh. I'm going to blow this up. That looks nasty. All right. So it's 10 whoops, times 10 carat 5 multiplied by 10 times 10 carat 5. Hit enter. It's 1 times 10 to the 12th. There's an easier way. Okay, if you know your rules for exponents, let me zoom this back out. So if you know your rules for exponents, you know that you could just take the 10, multiply it by itself, and then it's times 10, add these exponents. Okay? But it might be better, since a lot of times it's not so simple, just to work on can you type it into the calculator.
All right, so you will multiply the next one, 10 times 10 to the fifth, multiplied by 20 times 10 to the fifth. All right, and I'm confident Ms. Klein can help you with that. Ignore this stuff at the bottom, because I just explained how to do it up here. So make sure you scribble it out. Moving on. So how much does the force increase if each mass is doubled? So you got to look back. If you doubled one of the masses, by how much did the force go up or down? Number seven, don't worry about it. So scribble out number seven. Uh, number eight, all you do is do an MA multiplied by MB right here. So multiply that by that. You summarize here. So how do the masses of the objects affect the strength of the force? That shouldn't be too bad. This one might be bad. You're looking for the word product. So there it is. And we are skipping 11. And we flip. One more page. All right, show distance should already be on. You have to make sure you set each mass back to 10. Okay, set each mass back to 10. I have to do the same. All right. And for the distances, this gets people. You want one at negative five and the other one at positive five. Okay, to start out with here. So we're going to be at, yeah, make sure I'm not messed up. Negative five, positive five. I know you can't really see. Yeah, we're okay. All right, so you should be there. So look at all my settings here. 10, 10, negative five, positive five. So you take a guess here. How do you think the distance between objects A and B, A and B, will affect the strength of the force between them? So to make this simple, everybody starts out the same. Let's say if distance increases, you fill out the next arrow right here. The, so this will be an up or a down arrow of the gravitational force. So either, if you think that if the distance goes up, the force goes up, make your arrow up. If you think as the distance goes up, the force goes down, take your arrow down. Number two, take your best guess. So we're going to double the distance between them by how much do you think then the force will change. Instead of just saying up or down, it's going to be cut in half, it's going to be cut in a quarter, it's going to be cut in an eighth, whatever. You should already have your objects at negative 5 and 5, which is how you know if you look at the bottom numbers there. Whoops, here, it's 0.667 newtons. And the distance, as long as that box is checked, it's right here. Distance is 10 meters. It doesn't take a brain surgeon, which really isn't that funny considering where I'm at, but um, to count between those though. All right, so negative five and five, it'll be 10 tick marks. So it's a distance of 10 between. So 10 meters. We're almost there. All right, so 10 meters. This is the first one we've already done. The force is 0.667. For force factor, whatever is in this column. So it's FA divided by 0.667. So this one is obviously one. We've done force factors a lot now. So that is this column. Whatever you get here, there. One divided by the distance squared. So if we know our distance for the first one is 10, it's 1 divided by 10 squared, which is 1 divided by 100, which is 0 0.01, unless I'm crazy, which I might be. 1 divided by 100. 0 0.01, yeah. Don't leave it as just 1 over 100, because when you get this on the learning target, you've got to actually divide it out. All right? So that is how you do it. So what you're going to do for number five, so how did increasing the force affect it? You'll just say what you found, and you've already done number six by the time you get there. All right, so this one takes a little more brain power, but hopefully you will, like, replay this video if you get stuck at a part. And I think that is all. So do a good job. Show it to Miss Klein. She'll check your name off, put her in the basket, and 
knock out LT3. See you guys.